بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today I have a very, very important video. This video is coming from Islam, Islamic channel. And it's a sister who converted to Islam. Uh, she says, I never researched Islam. So let, let's get to it. This looks like a very emotional story. And actually, to be fair, I just, I just mentioned Islam, but at the time, Islam was the only one of the religions that I never researched at that time. Um, but what happened was I so had a bit of a situation and I don't know if I, know, I, don't, even, I don't know if I want to tell this story actually. Sorry, gonna have to cut that out. Um, I don't know if I want to tell this story, and I just started. I feel that that that's a bit weird. That's a bit weird. Should I tell the story? I don't know. You don't know the story, and I'm asking you, should I tell the story? Uh, okay, I'm gonna tell the story. Yeah, I've always believed in God. Um, growing up as a child, um, well, I came from a Christian background. I say I say Christian background. My parents christened us. I was christened as a baby and my nan was religious. She was very religious. She used to take us to church on Sundays. But my mum and dad per se, they didn't really go to church. It wasn't really their thing, not unless it was some kind of religious event, i.e. Easter, Christmas, that kind of thing. But I did, as far as I'm concerned, I had my own relationship with God. So from a young age, um, I always used to pray at night time not always but I would often pray at night time um, I was taught the you know the Lord's Prayer as a child so I would recite that and then I would just have a conversation with God and especially if it was a situation where I know I'd, I'd done something for example that um, you know parent wasn't pleased with or something that I felt felt bad about and I'd have a conversation and sometimes be begging begging God to just you know forgive me and I won't do it again just make sure everything goes right <laughs> Inshallah. But yeah, I always believed in God um, and I, I pretty much had a journey um, around my, between the age of 17 and 25 when I had my son, which was of me discovering my own relationship with Allah. There are a few things that influenced me becoming Muslim, to be honest. Um, so where I was at in my life at the time, um, I was in a relationship which was, it was a long, long term relationship with my, uh, with the, the father of my children. Um, and I'd always kind of like been a truth seeker anyway, especially because of my, like I said, I had that relationship with God, but I've always been a critical thinker. So I've always been the one to kind of ask questions outside the box um so at the time the relationship that i was in was very volatile it was very like there was a lot a lot going on and i was using i suppose the internet as a distraction from things that were going on in the house so i was doing a lot of research i was getting my head into a lot of like researching what's happening in the world what's going on in the world why why you know I suppose I was kind of like down the rabbit hole and doing the whole searching up the, the Illuminati and that kind of thing. And it that kind of led me to then start looking at religions because I came to the conclusion that, that all of this stuff's happening, it's out of our control. But I believe in God, so there's, there, there's something else. What else is there here? And I kind of was like, I don't really wanna, I didn't go to church, so I said to myself, I don't really want to go back to church. I don't really believe in Christianity like that because I never, I never really felt like Jesus was the son of God. I never felt like that was the truth. So I kind of started to look at other religions just to find out, well, you know, these people are into this, like they're into Buddhism, they're into Hinduism, they're into, you know, Sikhism. 
they're into Islam. What is what are these religions about? What's the differences? So I started to do that research. And actually, to be fair, I just, I just mentioned Islam, but at the time, Islam was the only one of the religions that I never researched at that time. Um, but what happened was I so had a bit of a situation and I don't know if I know, I don't even, I don't know if I want to tell this story actually. <laughs> Sorry, gonna have to cut that out. Um, I don't know if I want to tell this story and I just started. I feel that, that that's a bit weird. That's a bit weird. Should I tell the story? I don't know. You don't know the story and I'm asking you, should I tell the story? <sighs> okay. I'm going to tell the story. So I had a bit of a situation. I had a bit of a situation where the relationship that I was in at the time had me very low. So I was at my lowest, the lowest that I've ever been in my life. And this was not just, this was, you know, now at this age and, and at, with the experience that I have in my life, I can look back and say it wasn't just the relationship at the time that was the cause of that, um, I suppose, depression that I was going through. There was so much more and that was from childhood. But um, at the time, what was a focus was what was happening in the relationship. There was a lot of cheating, there was a lot of lying, there was a lot of me being called paranoid. There was a lot of deception, a lot of narcissistic behaviour. And at the time, what it had done to me was it had made me so low that I was contemplating suicide. And the, there was this particular day that I was, I was so upset. I think I'd been crying for like the whole morning. My head was hurting, my body was aching. And my children, the two oldest, because I've got three children, so the two oldest were in the front room and they were playing. And I could just hear them in the background playing. And the sound of them playing was the only thing that was consoling me. I took myself out of the bedroom, out of the bed, and I went into the front room so that I could be near them because the thoughts that were going through my head at the time were I couldn't combat them and that was the only thing that I knew would stop me from actually carrying out with the thoughts that I was having. So I, I went into the front room and I just sat in, in their presence and they didn't even, they didn't even realise, they were so engrossed in their playing and watching the telly and whatever not, they didn't even realise that I was crying. I don't know, I don't know if they did but I, di I didn't notice that they noticed that I was crying and um I wasn't crying out loud anyway, I was crying to myself. So I kind of sat on the chair and at that time I just sat down and I just, I literally went inside myself and I was pleading with, at the time obviously God, but I'll say Allah now, in my head and I was saying, please, I, I need, I need something, I need your help, I need some relief, something right now because I don't know what to do. And um, at that moment, I, I kind of had my eyes closed, but the window, I remember the window was sort of on my left here and the sun had passed across the window, but the warmth from the sun at that moment was just, it's like it was just beating through the window and I could just feel the warmth of the sun. And it just felt like <laughs> Allah had moved the sun in the way of the window to sit like as a sign for me to just know that everything's gonna be fine. I just felt in my heart that Allah was telling me, you're going to be fine. It's almost like I could hear Allah saying, you're going to be fine. You're, you're going to be absolutely fine. I'm here. I've always been here. So I felt this feeling of peace and this feeling of relief come over me. And then I just called the children, <laughs> just called them over. And they was like, what's wrong, mum? Because obviously at that moment they noticed. And I was like, nothing. And I just hugged them. I was like, just, I just wanted them to be in that moment with me. And um, yeah, so that was, that was the turning point for me. And I think from there, I started to seek the truth. Um, 
and I met a friend uh, uh, about two weeks later. I met up with a friend just out of the blue. Obviously, everything's Qadar Allah. But I just happened to be going to visit another friend. And this this friend, I hadn't seen her for about six years. Um, so she's getting out of her car, but I didn't notice her because she was fully covered in, um, you know, head to toe in black and she had on a niqab. And she called me, she called my government name. And she called me and then I've turned around and I've looked at, at the sister and I'm looking at her confused, like, hi. <laughs> she was like, it's Stephanie. <laughs> she said her name, it's me. And I was like, oh my gosh. So then we, from that moment, um, we started to connect. I was doing hair, she had four daughters. She asked me if I could come and do her daughter's hair and do her hair. So every time I went round to her house, she was giving me dawah, she was asking me questions and she was talking to me about Islam. And um, yeah, so eventually I ended up taking my shahada with her. <laughs> so the day I took my shahada, so at this point she had She'd given me a Quran, a, a small Quran, and she'd told me to take it home and to read it. And she'd said, said to me, she'd given me some instructions on what to do. She didn't tell me to make wudu, but she said to me to have a bath. Obviously, she probably thought it's a bit much for me to explain to you to make wudu and whatever not. So she told me to have a bath and that I should just read this little book. So when I took the book, um, I took it home and I put it on my bedside table and I put it by my lamp and I said to myself yeah I'm gonna read that and then <laughs> it was there for about a week before I decided that I was gonna read it maybe a bit longer than that but um when I did eventually decide to read it I opened up the Quran first of all I realized that the book's back to front so I opened it up and then started to read what was what I now know is Al-Fatiha at the time I didn't know what it was but I know that I read that first page and I just felt like this is too much. This is a lot. This is, I, I'm not ready for this book. And I just put it down. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to come back to that because I, I don't know, when I, when I read Al Fatiha, I felt some kind of, it just felt powerful. And it just felt like I'm being spoken to immediately as soon as I read that page so I just said to myself yeah I don't think I'm, I'm not ready for this yet I'm not ready for this yet I have to take this seriously I'm going to put it down I'm going to come back to it and that night that night I had a dream I had this dream and in this dream I'm lying on my bed and I'm looking at the ceiling and there was this ball of light that came out of the ceiling it emerged out of the ceiling and this is in the dream I'm lying on the bed looking at this ball of light floating down from the ceiling and I'm looking at it and saying what is that that's really pretty that's interesting and it's just floating down really slowly and then it just floated down and it just burst and emerged it just kind of like immersed my whole body full of light and I remember waking up the next morning and I sort of had this overpowering feeling of peace I had that in the dream as well sorry I literally had that immediately as the light kind of like just immersed itself through my body I had this feeling of peace and I remember waking up and feeling that feeling and then reflecting and remembering the dream and I'm, I'm saying to myself no but that dream was actually a movie I can remember that I remember there was a whole lot of other stuff that went on but I can't remember what happened and I can only remember that part. So then I remember I had a, a phone call with the sister that I mentioned. Um, I think it was about a day later. And I mentioned the dream to her and she was like, sis, that's the nur, that's the nur of Islam. Sis, no, I'm gonna call the Imam. I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna speak to him, I'm gonna tell him about your dream. And then she did, she went and she came back and um, she said, yeah, he, he said, that's, that's the nur sis you're gonna to have to take your shahada you know and she was just on it from there she was just on, <laughs> on to me so we had made an arrangement that that same friday i would go around and i would do her hair and her daughter's hair and um i remember before i went to see her i went to see the other friend that i knew that lived in the same building and i was there next door and i said to my other friends she thinks i'm going to take my shahada you know i don't know what she thinks this is i'm not doing that i'm not doing that <laughs> allah knows best
So anyway, I went to do her hair and she put on uh, this video. Um, I don't know if you remember it. It's uh, The Purpose of Life by Khalid, Khalid Yassin. So she put that on, the first part, mind you, because obviously it's very long, very long um, documentary. And, not documentary, sorry, it's a very long talk. So she put that on and I remember watching it and literally just, just being completely in awe, like, okay, that was a lot got to the end of it and she said, so what do you think? And then we started having a conversation. So I, I'm asking her questions and she's answering the questions. And then I asked her one particular question and she couldn't answer it. And at the time her husband was getting ready for Juma in the bedroom. So she went to ask him the question and he just came to the hallway and he's, he, he basically spoke to me from the hallway. Couldn't see him, obviously. So he was speaking to me from the hallway. But for the, from then, for the next two hours, he missed Juma and was speaking to me from the hallway and giving me dawa. And then um, got to the end of the conversation or we got to a point in the conversation where he was like, so sis, do you actually have any more questions? Because, you know, you've answered all these questions and it sounds to me like you, you believe, you know, you believe in the message of Islam. And I was like, yeah, but I don't really know. He's like, well, you know, you should just take your shahada because you don't know what's, what can happen tomorrow. You don't know if you'll even be here tomorrow, if you're going to even wake up. So I did. I took my shahada in the house with him and my friend. And that, I became Muslim. After that experience, the feelings subsided anyway. I never, I don't, remember or recall having the thought again after that day when that incident happened when I felt like Allah was talking to me or giving me you know that that comfort um, and after I took my shahada all the the only feel, thing that I felt immediately after taking my shahada was that I'd finally done something right for the first time in my life. That's what I, that's the only thing that I could think, this feels like I've done something right for the first time in my life. And from there onwards, it's just been a journey. Um, very much, you know, undoing, undoing what was done and changing habits and becoming who Allah wants me to be, not who I want to be. So my first Ramadan after I took the Shahada was almost, it was just under a year because I think I'd taken my Shahada just after Ramadan at the time. So it was just under a year. Um, and by that time, I, by the time it was Ramadan, my first Ramadan, I was now pregnant with my third child because I was still in the relationship from Jahiliya. Um, and obviously I'm a new Muslim, so I'm still learning stuff. And I had hopes that, you know, my, my children's father would have taken his shahada as well and he would have become Muslim and we could have got married. Um, so yeah, that first Ramadan was almost a year, just under a year after I took my shahada and by that time I was pregnant. So I was going into Ramadan with a lot of mixed feelings. My most distinct rem memory from my first Ramadan is that I actually left my children's father for the sake of Allah. During the last 10 days, I actually stopped that relationship and left. And I did it, feasibility and Actually, I would tried to leave so many times in the past before becoming Muslim and it hadn't worked. But this time I made dua. I made dua and I asked Allah to help me. I asked Allah to make it easy for me. And Allah did. He made it so easy. And when I came back to my house, he'd gone, he'd taken his stuff and he'd left. And I changed the locks and then the rest is pretty much history. Um, 
I think that first Ramadan was difficult for several reasons. Obviously, I was pregnant. Obviously, I was going through that situation. It was the first Ramadan. It was the first time I was fasting. So, you know, as a new Muslim, you want to do everything perfect. You want to get everything right. You want to do, you know, so it feels like when you can't achieve this, you feel just like a failure. Um, and I remember feeling that like that when you got to Eid, I just felt very much like I'd failed Ramadan because I had I wasn't able to complete the Ramadan the way that I wanted to, the way that I would have liked to, the way that I should have, as far as I was concerned. But it was a le it, again, it's a learning process because I was I was new, I was new to Islam. I'm changing habits, I'm changing things that I've been doing, like my whole mindset that I've had for years. Um, habits that I've had for years. This is not just something that changes overnight. But as humans, we're hard on ourselves. You know, we're, we're hard on ourselves. We expect some sometimes a bit too much of ourselves and we don't get, give ourselves the compassion that we would necessarily give to someone else. So I kind of had to, it took me a while to recognise that about myself. Um, and in regards to Ramadan, fasting has, it's never been something that's been easy for me. But the last, I'd say the last three, at least the last three Ramadans have been easier just simply because in the lead up, my preparation is making the intention and asking Allah for the, for the help to make it easier. Um, making that intention and having to walk in Allah that Allah is going to make Ramadan easy for me, the fasting easy and everything else, you know, the extra ibadah, standing up in the night for tarawih, all of these things. Because um, it's not, it's not easy to win, to do as a new Muslim. In the past, um, I didn't have a lot of support, but to be fair, that was my, that was partly my fault anyway. Um, I had the support of a few sisters, um, but that was because I've always been somebody to keep my circle very small and especially when it comes to to women coming from Jahilia I haven't had very good experiences of having close friendships with a lot of women and I just have a handful of people around me and my children so when it came to um, you know talking to people and and being social at Islamic events I wasn't that person I'd be very much you know in the corner and keep myself to myself. Um, so over the years, that's been something that has, I've had to change. I've had to learn to adapt that. I've had to learn to kind of break that cycle. Um, and this last few years, definitely, Alhamdulillah, Allah's increased that circle of sisters for me. Like the sisterhood that is around me at the moment, I definitely feel like um, has been a blessing from Allah that Allah's giving me that support, alhamdulillah. So what I would advise new Muslims for Ramadan is to just pace yourself. Um, a lot of people will, will say, write lists, you know, write yourself a list of all the things that you want to do. That list that you write can end up having like 15 to 20 different things on there. And you have to be realistic with your time, with your lifestyle, with this new change that you've made. You have to be realistic. Less is more. So there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he mentions that Allah loves for the believers to do things that, you know, do small but regular deeds. Um, and that makes sense. Less is more. Just, you know, don't put so much pressure on yourself to do this, this, this and this. Just do one thing, even if it's one thing a day, even if you're just reading one ayah of Quran, I know everybody wants, you know, the idea is that we should read the whole Quran throughout the month of Ramadan. That was one of my issues that I never, ever got to read the whole Quran. But I'm happy even if I just read one ayah a day because at least I've read some. And I know definitely if that's more than I've been doing for the rest of the year, then Alhamdulillah, you know. I think the advice that I would give to born Muslims for reverts or convert Muslims during Ramadan is to be be um, welcoming, be inviting. Um, a lot of reverts are spending Ramadan by themselves because they come from families where it's non they're non-Muslim, you know, non-Muslim background, and 
a lot of the time their families don't understand the change that they've made they don't want to understand and so they feel kind of ostracized they feel ostracized from their family but they're not quite yet you know submerged in the muslim community so they feel ostracized and they might not reach out so they need the people to reach out to them which is their fellow Muslims to reach out to them, to offer them that solace that they need, that support that they need. Um, it's easier said than done because everybody's walking around with these issues of don't really necessarily, you know, talk to people outside their circle. It's, you know, coming outside your comfort zone is difficult for everyone. But that would be my advice. You know, if you see a sister uh, or a brother in the masjid and you know that they're a reaver or the, whether they're a reaver or not, they're by themselves, reach out, you know, say, give them salams and invite them to maybe sit down and read Quran with you or do whatever it is that you're doing at the time, inshallah. Yeah, that was it for the video, and the video was a very emotional. Uh, sister get into uh, tears, and she went through a lot of uh, hardship, and you know, I was just uh, watching, and uh, I couldn't stop watching. The video is kind of a bit longer. Yeah, and I hope you enjoyed. See you on the next video.